Hey everybody, welcome back to Stamping School. Oh, there's a lot to show you this week. This is a new thing that's the online exclusives. It's called Frosted Forest. A lot of people have been using it because it's cool. I will say, I've got a lot of trees, but this bundle is pretty cool. So there's stamps, there's dies, and then there are the layering masks, which I can show you. So you can get these separately too, if you want to. I'll give you the details first and then I'll show you how it all works. It's a pricey bundle if you get all three. If you get the stamps and the dies and the masks, or stencils, I still call them, um, it's $64.75. Of course, if you do it before the end of the month, then you still get that $5 off coupon that you can use for August. But it is a little pricey, however, it's really fun. And if you want just these layering stencils, they're only $15. So I'll show you what those look like and how you can use them separately without these. All right, let's look at the stamp set first. Frosted Forest. So it's not a publication. It just means that it's not going to be around forever, but so far so good. It's still there. So it's you know, I thought at first it was going to be a holiday set and it can be, and I'll show you a sample for that. But no beauty shines brighter than that of a good heart. You've got a little bird, a hawk, whatever you want to make it to be, um, some spruce and pine trees, and I don't know what kind of tree that is, but I like it. Thinking of you and how you strengthen my life, birthday wishes for a day as great as you are. That's a nice sentiment. And then thank you. Then the dies. Okay, this is where it gets, there's so many combinations. I could be here for an hour. So I like to cut everything out to see how it's gonna go. This is just the stamp by itself, just stamped. You can take this outline and you can cut the tree out that way, or you can take the die and you can cut out just with cardstock like this, see? And then this piece, if you cut that out together and make sure you tape them together so that they don't move and ruin your dies. You gotta make sure when you put them in your machine if you line them up like that, tape them so they don't shift around. But if you cut it like that, you can cut this one in brown and you can lay that in like that. Or you can just cut the whole thing in green and then this in brown and lay it on top. So you can do it that way, which is kind of fun. There's also this piece right here that can go over top here or behind it or on top of here. See how they layer together? It's just so clever. Um, there's this long one right here that this can be as long as you want. It doesn't cut the bottom. So this would be great for winter scenes, um, Halloween, you know, anything like that because it's just the bare trees. Then you've got, um, of course, the dies will cut this. Then you've got the stamp that will stamp just like this. You can stamp the, the pine trees this way and you can overlay them with dies, or you can cut them out. I'm telling you, there are so many possibilities. You can just cut it out like that. Now you can also use the mask on all of these. If you wanna use them together, I'll show you how to do that. It's just, my mind was just uh, having just a ton of different ideas for all the ways that you could use these combinations of trees. So this one is the stamp plus the mask. I'll show you two different ways to use it, how to get this watercolor background using the mask, and then also how to get the snow on the pine tree. Now the masks come six. These three go together and they are numbered one, two, three, and these are A, B, C. So, and there's the big tree and the little tree and it's A, B, and C, okay? So we're gonna use these first so I can show you how they work. Now, I like to tack this down a little bit just because it keeps it from moving around. And find your center however you want to. If you want, you can cut your paper the same size and then they always line up, that's good too. Now, the age-old question, should you use sponge daubers or the brush? It's up to you. I like the sponge daubers. I, they come in a pack of five. You can wash them out and reuse them. I just like the extra control on them. So use your, your dye-based ink, your water-based ink. And if you want to, you can tape this down. 
but I'm not going to. I'm going to show you what this looks like with no stamping at all. And you can pounce or you can burnish, what I call, where you just sort of go in little circles and just rub it in, just like that. Now you can take these to the sink or you can just use a wet wipe or you can just wash them off. They wash pretty easily. There's the first one and here is the second one. Now the little tentacles here, can you see those? They will line up on top of what you've already done. So we're gonna go back to olive. Now some people use several different colors of green. I'm just gonna use olive and I'm gonna go very lightly with the sponge dauber. Now be careful with these little delicate branches that are coming out, okay? Be just be careful, mindful of those. And don't worry, you don't have to get everything, but you want to get a good amount of it. And again, if you want to tape this down to keep it there, you can. I'm typically a little, I like to just get going. So as you're coming around and kind of going out where those little branches are, away from them, because if I go into them too much, I could pick them up and hurt them and we don't want to do that. All right, so there is the second layer. So this last one to me can always be a little bit tricky to line up to where it's supposed to go. If you have trouble, come back with your second one, lay them together like that, and go back to what you had just done and you'll find that it's much easier to line up that way. And then just go a little bit darker in each of those where the little spots are. And you're just going back over it with the olive. So it's just, see how it's just a touch darker? So it's just not so dramatic. Now this is what it looks like without the stamps. And I think it looks great. Let me show you what it looks like with the stamp over top of it. I'm just gonna do it in espresso so you can see. It just gives it a little bit more definition. Now you could just take a marker and do the same thing. If you don't have the stamp, you can just go and put all those little little guys in there. I went off the edge a little. But it's isn't it pretty? It's just gonna be fun to do lots of trees and it doesn't, it can be sympathy, it can be birthday, it can be anything. Let me show you how I did this watercolor background here. This one's done on watercolor paper, um, but I'm gonna show you how you can do it on just regular paper too. And it's using something that you have if you have these masks. <laughs> this is a little messy, I warn you, but it's fun. Really the same thing we've done for years, using acetate, window sheets, anything like that. Get your water-based markers, or you can just use your ink pad directly on here. I'm gonna do um, Lost Lagoon, and I'm gonna do it on the back side. I'm gonna do Lost Lagoon, scribble, scribble, scribble. And I'm gonna do olive on the bottom for the grassy area. I mean, since we have this out already, we might as well use it, right? I'm gonna do a little pink and a little orange this time. Let's see what that looks like. All right, now protect your surface area, water in a spray bottle. And spray it till it doesn't look scribbly anymore. And then lay your paper right on top. Now you can take a block or something, kind of mush it down. Right. And then we can turn it over and look at it. Oh, cool. All right. And then let that dry. We're gonna peel it off. And you can use your heat tool if you want to or just let it air dry. Now, the basic white is a little more um, smooth. It's, it doesn't like the water as much. It's still kind of cool. And you've got a nice area right here where the tree was so you know where to stamp and to do it and let that dry. Now this one, like I said, I did on watercolor paper. This one I did, it came out a little more limey because I used, um, I think I used the granny apple green on that one, but you can just have, have fun with it and make different backgrounds and then do your stamping 
and do your stenciling. So on this card, I don't know if you can see the little detail around the edges, but I cut it out with a radiating stitches die just to give it that little bit of texture around the edges. And then I cut out the tree after I'm done and popped it up. So I added some espresso back behind there. So there's a little espresso peeking out. So it just gives it a little bit of lift. So when you're looking at it and you're holding it, there's some texture and the little bird and just a little basic little thank you down here. Now let's look at this one that has some snow on it. Right. Now these three, they have A in the corner with the notch in the corner and B and C. So they, are, they these three go together and it's for the large and the small pine tree. So I'm gonna take a larger piece of paper and we're gonna start with A. You can cut it the same size if you want to but I'm gonna cut it just a little bit bigger so I've got some room right here. I'm gonna keep those together. So there's an A down in the corner. You can't see that, I'm sure, with the notch. And I'm gonna start, I've got shaded spruce through here. So we're doing two layers with shaded spruce and the sponge dauber and just very, very lightly do your little circles. I think the reason why I like the sponge daubers a bit better, um, I feel like the brushes soak up so much ink and these don't as much. And so you can kind of control how much you're getting on there a little bit better, but that's just me. All right, so there's A. Now you can wipe this off now. Just know that you might get your ink wet. So. You know, sometimes I'll just wipe them off at this point, like that, just to keep the mess a little bit under control. And B, again, in, this, in that bottom corner, it's kind of nice to keep your papers together. Here's B. So this is gonna go a little bit darker. And again, I'm doing the burnishing, where I'm kind of doing a little rub, getting that ink down in there. And the last step is going to be the white snow. Now I think it'd also be really pretty if it was gold as your last layer, or you could do, do an even darker green, but I'm gonna do snow caps. I'm using just water, but you could use your Stampin' Mist, I suppose. And you could take it off first and clean it, but you run the risk of getting that on there, but that's okay. Now you could stop here and then you could do the stamps on top. So for instance, like I'll show you on this one. You could take the little stamp with shaded spruce or even something even darker. Look, it gives you all the little needles. So before we do this next step, you wanna get your Versamark ink pad. I have a dauber that's just for Versamark and though it looks like it says voicemail, it means Versamark. So this one is just for my Versamark pad for embossing. But before you do this last step, before you do the embossing in the Versamark, you want to use your embossing buddy, your, this guy, to get rid of any moisture or any static or anything so it stays, the white spots are going to stay right where we want them. Put this back together again, tape it down. Now we can do our Versamark. Now at this point, you could also do a white paint and tap through here and let it dry. I think the white embossing kind of shows up a little bit better. You can also take the pad and go directly on top, but you'll waste a lot of ink because it'll come all the way over here. So you just don't want to miss it. Be really methodical so that you don't miss any because you can't see it. But you want to make sure that you get every bit so we can add our snow. And you can do this one too while you're at it. Powder. I do like the new embossing powder. It is very opaque and nice. I would like it to be a touch finer for sentiments, but I do like it for snow. Pretty nice, okay. And then we just do our heating. Right, can you see the, the white on there? To make it pop just a little bit more, now we can use the brush and just gently go over here. And I like to go off my edge a little bit to kind of get rid of that. And actually, 
you know, we have two sizes. I like the smaller one better for this. Balmy blue, kind of get it off there and just gently go over it. And then at the very end, when you've got as much blue on as you want, take a paper towel and just wipe it off of the embossed areas. You could also do this before the embossing step, which might be a good idea, but just enough to make that pop. You don't want to make it too blue, but you want the, the white to stand out a little. And then once you take your paper towel and wipe off the ink off the white, this is just a dry paper towel, then the white really shows. Can you see that? Yeah, be pretty with glitter too. So for this card, I used the Countryside Corners die, cut it out, added a balmy blue background that's embossed with some wood grain, added a little piece of designer paper back here, just a little, kind of like a tag, some balmy blue striped paper, and punched a few holes and tied some ribbon in, added a little tiny sentiment down here at the bottom, good tidings, and then on the inside, I just added the smaller tree down there and I'll put a little sentiment there. It's a yes for me, the whole thing. <laughs> this, the, and you know, sometimes I say no, but this is, I really like it all. I like the masks, I like the dies, I like the stamp set, I like it all. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Make sure you hit the like button and we'll see you next week. See it, learn it, stamp it.